So the copper shaft is subjected to the axial loads shown. Determine the displacement of end A with respect to end D. If the diameters of each segment are 20, 25, and 12 millimeters, and we're told Young's modulus is 126 gigapascals. So the first step that I'm going to take in this question is to divide it up into the three different um, sections. So we can see that through the section AB here, we should have a constant load, and we can also see that the diameter in Young's modulus doesn't change either, so there's no need to divide it into any further sections. We can see again through section BC, we should have a constant load through there because there's no change in the force. And again, diameter and Young's modulus are constant, so we don't need to do any further divisions. And finally, we've got a third section, CD, that we're going to need to consider as well. So I'm going to start by drawing the free body diagram um, of each section um, by taking a cut through it to find the internal load. So let's start with considering AB. So I'm going to take a cut through that section and we need to redraw either the left or the right hand side of the free body diagram and I think if we take the left it's going to make our lives a little bit easier because we have not much um, going on. So we've got this force of 36 kilonewtons acting on our little piece and we need to replace through the cut with the internal load and we can see that we're only going to have an axial component I'm going to draw it this way because they need to balance against each other and I'm going to write this as PAB for the internal load through section AB. So we know that we need to maintain equilibrium so the forces in the x direction have to be zero. Therefore the force PAB has to be equal to 36 kilonewtons. So the other thing we need to think about is whether this internal force is causing tension or compression through that part of the member. And we can see that PAB is pushing onto our member, which is going to mean that it's in compression. And this section here is going to try and get smaller in its length. Alrighty. So that's the first one sorted. So let's move on to the next section, which is BC. And again, we need to take a cut through our section. And we have the choice of taking the left or the right hand side. I'm going to take the left again, but I don't think it really matters this time. It's pretty similar. So we've got this 36 kilonewtons acting on the end, and we've also got these two 22.5s. And at the cut point through here, we need to replace it with the internal loading. And I'm going to take a guess at the direction and say it's going to go this way. PVC. And remember, if you get it wrong, it just comes out negative um, in the answer, and you know to flip over the arrow. So we need to sum the forces to be equal to zero. So we're going to have 36 pointing to the right. We've got two pointing backwards of 22.5. And we've got PVC going forwards. So solving for the internal force through the section BC. We end up with an answer of 9 kilonewtons, and it comes out positive, so that tells me I did draw the direction correctly. And looking at this internal force, it's pulling away from our member, which means it's going to be in tension through this segment. And try and get a bit longer. Alright, so that concludes that one. So we only have one left, and that is to look at what happens through section CD. And again, we need to cut through the segment. This time I think it's probably easier to take the right hand side of the diagram because we only have that 27 kilonewton force and we're going to have the force internally which is CD. Again this segment needs to be balanced so the force through section CD is going to be equal to 27 kilonewtons and because this internal force is pulling away it's going to be putting that section in tension. So we've now worked out the internal force through each part, and whether that's intention or compression. The last bit is just now to compute what the change in the length of the overall uh, thing is. So we know that we have the equation, which is that our axial deformation, or the change in the length, is equal to the sum of PL on AE for each of the different parts that make up our system. 
So in our case, we're going to have PL on AE for section AB. We're going to have PL on AE for BC and PL on AE for CD. So let's start with looking at what's happening with section AB. So the force we've said is equal to 36 kilonewtons. And I'm going to put everything into base units. So that's going to make it 36,000. We then need to multiply by the length of um, section AB. And if we scroll up, we can see that this length in here is 2 meters. And we need to divide it by the cross-sectional area, which we were told section AB had a 20 millimeter diameter. So this is going to be pi on 4. I'm going to put this in meters, so it's 0 0.02 and it's squared. And then we need to multiply by Young's modulus for our material, and we're told that's 126 gigapascals. So everything here is in the base units, which means that my answer should come out in meters, and I can convert it into something else um, if necessary. So the other thing I need to do is figure out whether this needs to go in as positive or negative. We've said that this part is in compression. So if it's in compression, it's going to get smaller. So you need to put your change in length in as a negative value in this equation. All right, so we'll move on to BC. So the force in BC we said was 9 kilonewtons or 9,000 in newtons. We need to multiply the length of BC and we know that that's 3.75 meters. We need to divide by the cross-sectional area, and we're told that BC is 25 millimeters, so it's going to be pi on 4 times 0 0.025 squared, and we have the same Young's modulus as before. So this section we said was in tension, which means when we put it into the equation, we need to put it in as a positive value. All right, so one left, which is what's happening in section CD. So we know it's got a force of 27,000 kilonewtons, oh, sorry, 27 kilonewtons or 27,000 newtons. We need to multiply by the length of that member. So we can see that this part is 2.5 meters. We need to divide it by the cross-sectional area, which is pi on 4 multiplied by 12 millimeters or 0 0.012 in meters. And then we need to multiply by Young's modulus, which again is the same as before because we haven't changed the material. So last thing is the fact that it's in tension, which means our change in length needs to be positive in this equation because it's going to get longer. So all you need to do then is type all of these numbers into a calculator to get out your final answer. And this simplifies to just 0 0.00346. Remember I said it's going to come out in meters because I put everything into base units. So if you want to further convert it, you can. If you multiply it by a thousand, you're going to put it in millimeters and that's equivalent to 3.46. So that's the final answer for this question. The total change in the length is going to be that 3.46. Um, that's all there is and see you in another video.